What's good with it in the hood with it? Welcome back to the collective clips where we slip it in, we get it in, it's clipped in. Just do your thing, man. You already know what it is. Before we get into the story at hand, I want to say thank you and I appreciate all the support that I'm getting right here on the collective clips. We're really making things happen right here. Gracias. It's highly appreciated from the bottom of my little itty bitty black heart. Now trip out. Hit that like and subscribe. There's a notification bell. Don't be scared. Touch it. Put it to all and you'll be abreast of all the dope content that I'm bringing all week long, man. I appreciate it highly. Like I said, I don't even know how to show you guys other than tell you guys righteous stories and bring a smile to your face. Now, in a menudo style of direct fashion, you guys see the thumbnail so you already know what I'm talking about. My very first day in prison. A lot of people have been to penitentiaries. A lot of people have been to prison, man. Level four yards, three yards, two yards. We don't count one yards, right? Um, I have a Theo, and I'm going to tell you a funny story about his little one yard situation. Lil McFarlane. I didn't know if the Vato was running for a Disney fucking uh, movie or the Vato was really there. Didn't even know it was a real prison, but I guess it was. Anyways, um, I've never hit anything other than a three or four yard. So that's just what my life encompassed. Um, that's my resume, man. The G was in me. So now, my first day in prison. I've heard a lot of different stories about people's first days. And every first day is different, gente. Every first day is not the same for you or for me. You know, it might be all smooth. It might be fucking easy, breezy, beautiful cover girl for you. But for me, it might be Rocky Road, not Hershey bars, right? So that's just the way it is. But for the most part, most people that are going to prison, if it's their very first time and they're young and they've never been adjusted to the prison situation, you got a little bit of nerves, man. I know I did. A little bit of butterflies, man. A little apprehension. Not necessarily scared, but nervous of the situation at hand. Where am I going? It's the unknown. What's going to happen? Is it like the movies? Sasuke, he makes Kinesi. Are they going to be doing all that? Or is it like, hey, you get there, you get right to the program, and the homeboys embrace you. One never knows does one. I think the only good thing about my first situation was my county jail. Being from an actual functioning county jail as a Norteño, I was pretty much, I had the leg up, man. I had the game already locked in before I got there. The homeboys, one thing about Merced County Jail, where I'm from, you're laced up. Man, you're indoctrinated. And you know what? The enlightenment is there. They're enlightening you into everything that you need to know. So that way, when you do hit prison, you know, the reception and so on and so forth, you are ready. If you're not ready, <laughs> then you're going to deal with Fast Eddie. And that's just how it is. But my situation was pretty smooth, right? Well, for the most part, because I was laced up in the county jail. Now, when you come from a functioning county jail, what does functioning county jail mean? It means a county jail that's in branching union, hand in hand with what's going on in prison. We were abreasted every week of what exactly was going on, what yards were kosher and smooth, what yards were no good. So you already knew when you got there exactly what was going to be you know, asked of you exactly what was going to be expected of you. Expectations is a big thing in prison. Respect, being honest, being real, and expectations. Homes, you're expected to function if that's what you're doing. Hey, ain't nothing right. Hey, nothing riding around here for free money, man. You're going to put in your fucking work. You're going to get your hands dirty like the rest of us. And that's just how it was. Bottle said it. Now I said it. Fill it up with unleaded because the wind blows over here. That's exactly what it's like. Okay, when you watch movies. Some of these movies piece together little parts that are actually and factually true. Some are just too Hollywood, man. They're outlandish and they're going to lie to you like a different channel on YouTube. But in real life, for the most part, man, most of those movies hit it pretty spot on. Now, I pulls up, right? After being laced up by the homies, they gave me A. They already let me know what it, what it was and what it is. And I'm not going to lie, man. I had a little cana. I had a little cana being a wheelah. And I had a little plug, man. I had a little bit of a little something, something on me. I was taken into prison just to get me started out right. Just to give the household, the casa, a little something to work with, right? That's just how it was, man. Here, homie, here's a bundle. Take that with you. That's going to get you sat down, right, homes? That's going to get some fucking comida on your plate. That's going to get some hygiene in your locker. That's the way we do it in my county jail because we got to look out for all homeboys, man. We only have each other. And that's how it was. You know, I was active at the time, so I was functioning in a northern capacity, meaning those were my peoples. Those were the people I was seeking and I was looking for, for embracement, for canalismo. I wasn't looking at the other side for any type of love, man. I already knew those were the opposition and that's what it was. Well, in Tracy Prison, DVI Gladiator School, that has a long history of being a treacherous 
very treacherous prison. Um, times had changed. It still was rocking. It still was going down. But in this situation right here, it was a little bit different. Meaning nowadays, you know, it was hard to get to each other. It being a reception, it wasn't a lean. I mean, there was main line there. I think it was two or three yard main line, um, X dorm, Y dorm, Z dorm. I don't know what it was. I never got there. But I know for sure, man, Tracy Prison, I've been there six different occasions as far as doing violations, as far as reception. Yeah, I done did all that there, homie. That's facts. You know, J Wing, H Wing, East Hall, West Hall. Been through the wiggle, man. K, you know, K Wing, the oil. I've been all through it, man. I can tell you exactly what Tracy looks like, smells like, is like. So, and this is facts. I remember jumping on that bus and I was already secured with my abreastment for the people, you know. So I was kind of nervous about that. Like, I didn't know when I got to R&R, &R, were they going to search me? Were they going to sit me down on some type of electronic device to see what I had inside me? Because um, I was properly secured. You know, that's one thing that was taught in our county jail, how to secure yourself, how to fucking move, you know, smooth with a purpose. So anyways, I remember on the bus to Tracy, they had whoever was going GP mainline. We were all sitting in the back of the bus or throughout the bus. Excuse me, throughout the bus. Shit, I got the Buddha piece. Oh my, I should do some Buddha piece, huh? They had us all there, and those that were in PC or those that were going to segregated cells or whatever the case may be, they were segregated into single cages. And I remember everybody was looking at them but not speaking to them because you don't know what's up. It could be a high power individual coming from a prison like High Desert or coming from, you know, somewhere down south that's segregated for their own reasonings. You know, I know a lot of the times when you're going to Tracy reception, they kept the southerners in those cages, not because they were PC'd up or they were S and Y or any of that. Because they kept them segregated from the North Annuals. That being a Northern reception, the Northerners were always going to be the deepest. But there were some woods. There were some brothers, man. 44G stand up. I met a good homeboy from Stockton on that bus ride. That vault was like, I'm going there to beat people up. I said, ooh, wait, right? He's ready. Um, he had a little 12-year bid, man. And he turned that into 20. Facts. So anyways, I remember thinking to myself, and that's what I was stressing on the most. You know, what it was going to be like. Was I going to run into homeboys? You know, I had never been to Tracy in my life, so I didn't know the makeup, the get down. You know, I didn't, I've only watched prison up prior to that point on TV. You know, movies like American Me, uh, just different movies that showed prisons. So I automatically assumed it was going to be tears high with the fucking cell like this, like Miklo. I didn't know exactly what, what it was, but I knew that that's what I had on my plate. I had to go, you know, um, shit, there was no turning back now. I fucked up and I was going to pay for the consequences for my actions. So anyways, I'm there secured, and I want that motherfucker shackled up, homie. You know what I mean? I'm shackled up on the Grey Goose, like, oh, hell no. This is just like movies, that shit, right? And so as we pull up to Tracy, there's a big old sign in the front. You're welcome to Tracy Prison, DVI. Um, it said, whites and northerners on lockdown. I said, well, hold up. I'm a northerner. Does that mean I'm on lockdown? Absolutely, that's what it meant. It meant I was on lockdown for a situation, albeit that I was not even involved in. It doesn't matter. If it's your hanty or your people that did something, cracked it off, caught a body, got caught up in a riot or a melee, you're going to suffer the repercussions for their actions. The struggles began already. Now, you got to understand, I did the youth authority, which was also a leg up. It helped me to understand what incarceration feels like. The boredom, the unpleasantries, you know, the food, you know, anything that you could think of that's a hardship or a struggle. I've already been, went through it for almost seven years. So I knew exactly what incarceration entailed. It entailed a whole lot of nothing and a whole lot of politics and games being played. But it was going to be much different from YA. Because in YA, I knew we played YA games. We were young kids trying to achieve status, trying to set our mark, trying to gain respect. Here, you either had it or you didn't have it. Anything that happened on the streets prior to you getting locked up behind them walls doesn't fucking count other than bad cases. Those will count forever, right? But when you get there, that's where your reputation is going to proceed itself. Now, if you're a righteous, functioning homeboy in the streets, you kicked it with the right crowd, homes, and you did what you had to do, well, you're going to have a little bit of respect because best believe when you're going to your own reception, people are going to recognize you. Hey, that's the homie right there. Hey, wait up. Are you clear? Are you clear? Puto, right? They're going to make sure that you're clear. And I'm going to tell you about clearance and all that. So anyways, I remember thinking to myself, fuck, I hope I don't get caught with this bundle because that could fuck up my whole situation right from the gate. You know, if I get caught with this bundle, I don't know what this Wheelah says. I wasn't privy to seeing what the homeboys are saying to the other homeboys. I just knew upon getting there, I had to fucking slide it, get my fishing line together and slide it to who it needed to go to. So anyways, I get there, R&R, &R, and they're taking us off the bus, man. And they're asking us if we're general population 
or for PC or S and Y. And I didn't say shit. And the reason I didn't say nothing is I was told, don't say nah, the homie, they're going to put you where they put you. And you're going to have to fight your way out of it or kick on back. Either way, homie, just go with the flow. So they're like general population or where do you want to go? I was like, oh, hell no. Right. I ain't saying nada. So they threw me in a cage with general population. There were some whites, some brothers, and of course, northerners. There was about four southerners that were on that bus that day. They put them in their own cage. And of course, they put the protective custody inmates in their own cage. And them authors are getting ridiculed by the guys that were in r, &R already. They're like fucking up their bundles and all kinds of stuff. You know, giving them all fucked up bed rolls. Um, so we sat there for about an hour and they pulled each person out of the cell or out of this cage one by one. They threw us a sack lunch. I got my appleization on. That apple was like no other apple I've ever had. That motherfucker was bomb. They gave us a little pack of peanut butter. I slid it on the apple. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It wasn't an onion. That's it. So that shit was bomb. I was hungry. Um, cause they took us like at fucking three in the morning. You know what I mean? Boom. We had to hit a couple little spots. We had to double back. We went all the way to Stockton on back. You know, it's just what it was. So anyways, we're there and I'm talking to the homie from 44 G's. He's a crib, uh, townhomes, right? And he's telling, we're, we're war storing it, man. He's telling me about that. He's telling me about the county jail, how it was. He said North Angeles was walking around in flip-flops in Stockton, but that's all they gave him. I was like, damn, they do it like that. And we're just talking, we're talking our gang shit. Um, they pull him out. Talk to him. He comes back. He's like, yeah, they're going to put me on H-Wing, man. He's like, hopefully you can slide over there. You know what I mean? I get out the keyways about you. Keyway being Crips, right? Um, he said, let him know. You know what I mean? A young northerner came in, man. First term, man, but you a good dude. I said, gracias. I appreciate that. Now, that's one thing about prison. Any type of help, any type of um, respect that you get, man, is highly appreciated because you don't know where you're going, man. You need backup. You know, they might put you in no man's land. They're saying you're going to have to do what you does, cuz. So at this point in time, I was depending on this keyway, you know, to help me, this crib. Um, but I wasn't going to need that, man. So anyways, they sit me down. A sergeant's like, yeah, who you think you are? I said, I, 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 I mean, shit, you know what I mean? It's who you think I am at this point. It's not who I think I am. It's what you think, right? So he was like, look, we're going to put you on J-Wing, you know, with the Northanials. Um, It says here that you're Northern affiliated. I said, I don't know who said that, right? He said, well, are you a gang member? Are you active or what? <laughs> shit, you're asking the wrong person, homie. You know what I mean? I'm not saying if I'm active because I already understood coming from a functioning county jail exactly what they do. And that's a manipulation tactic to trick you into a validation point, a self-admittance point. If you say, yes, I'm an active Northaniel, bam, validation point. Got you, bitch. You said it. Fill it up with unleaded. Oh, no, you said it, right? Mm -mm, right? And then, of course, they see some pictures. You throw in that one, four, one, three, whatever case may be, whatever group you're from. There's another one, boom. Now they only need one more to validate, validate your ass and your ass is sitting back there in the Tehachapi shoe, sad and mad at the world. I don't get it, man. So I'm supposed to go. I'm supposed to go to Mill Creek, right? That's just what it is. So anyways, I'm kicking on back. They slide me to J. I remember walking in there and thinking, damn, this is a dirty ass place. As soon as I walked in, I seen tears high on both sides and I said, okay, this is prison. This is prison, homes. This is what American me looked like when they were walking, remember? You, motherfucker, you, you're going to lose, Doc, right? That's what it looked like. So I walk in, go up to the second tier, man. My celly's already there. They tell him, turn around. Boom, he turns around, faces the door, bam, I slide in. First thing I do is drop my little property. I had a little bolsita, right? My sack lunch or whatever I took with me. I dropped that motherfucker like, what's happening, homie? You active, right? Because that's what we were abreast of saying, man. Are you active? If the vault, start looking at him. If the vault was wearing chanclas and his mattress is unrolled, take flight, homie. More than likely, they put you in the wrong area, right? Nothing scarier than a northerner going in there and there's a non-active that thinks he's a pit bull terrier. Arr! You got to snatch him. So anyways, they put me in there. The homie's like, nah, nah, nah. I'm a good homeboy. Song hole and shit. All right. All, boom, boom, boom. He was like, yeah, what's up, bro? Where you come from? I said, man, hey, look, I got to drop, bro. I got to do something. He's like, I got you, homes. I said, post up right there by the door. Boom. Did my drop. Started immediately to make my fishing line. Now, that's one thing I was taught about prison. Immediately. Fuck all the chit chats and the gibberish, right? Start making your linea. Of course, the homeboy gets at me. He's like, hey, you're going to get something slid to you, homes, so you need to make a linea. Homies are already at the door. Hey, spend time on the tira. The fucking home, the skinny ass, ugly homeboy that just came. Make a linea. We got something for you. Of course, something came for me, man. And it was a fucking, and I don't even want to go into the details of the politics of what it was. Let's just say something got slid to me. I had to fill a few things out, slide it back. Bam. Everything worked out for everything, man. Next day, the clearance game was real. Um, Now I was within the household, man. I was a functioning ass Northaniel right there with the homeboys. Um, I slid what I had to to my tier security. He did what he had to do with that. I never seen nothing else.
I don't know how that worked out for me, right? But that's just what it was. I came to find out soon after doing so much time in Tracy that there's so many people coming in and out, man. Nine times out of 10, you're not going to get back what you sent out. Facts. Should have just kept the shit. Mm. Homeboys were like, damn, you, you gave that up? You stupid, eh? That was for you, eh? You know, what do you want me to do? Do it all? Shit, whatever it takes, right? Anyways, I did what I had to do because that's what righteousness was um, expected of me. Expectations. Um, I remember looking around that first day, my first day in prison. And that's when you finally get the realization, man, I'm here. I did it. I made it. But I was of the mindset like I achieved something within my gang. I achieved something within my lifetime. I remember being in the youth authority, thinking about it all the time. Damn, what am I going to do my first day in prison? Well, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to do exactly what everyone else did and sit my punk ass right there on the bunk and wait for chow because there wasn't nothing else to do. This was reception. Wasn't a linea, and all we had to do all day is burpees and look forward to whatever there was they fed us, right? Um, we were on lockdown, so we were getting fed our meals right down the tier. They'd come with these big carts, slide you know, slide our meals into us, open the tray slots, or fucking open the doors, and boom, that's what you got. You get what you got, eat it or don't, homes. Um, after about 15 days of burpees, I understood that I fucked everything up on that tray, even the butter. Everything was bombed. Diabetes, go to hell. I need what I got. Every calorie counts in prison. Um, and I stood there, man, and I got a few good sellies and I did have a few fucked up sellies. Um, but I started to get laced up in the game. I, I you know, I achieved, uh, a little bit of status within the COC just because who I was about the end of my time there. And we were on lockdown because prior to me getting there at this time, um, the Norteños and the whites had got off with each other. That's what usually happens in Tracy. You know, you're not going to see Norteños and Southsiders get off. I don't If someone comes on here in Tracy that it wasn't the 70s or the 80s and they're saying, hey, Holmes, the Norteños were getting off fucking with the Southsiders. They're lying, Holmes. They're segregated. They're kept separate. Um, it's just the way it is, you know. Um, but most of the time, the Norteños will be getting off with either the blacks or the whites, more than likely the whites. You know, because a lot of these brothers, man, that are there are from the Bay Area or they're from like Stockton, Sacramento, you know, whatever, Modesto. So we're cool with them. A lot of us know them from the streets. Anyways, man, I get a little little wheel shot to me. It's shot from the Keyway. He's across the street on H-Wing. I'm on J, man. He's getting at me like, hey, what's up, brother, man? Are you good? Are you good? Do you need anything? I said, yeah, I need a salt He's like, I ain't got one, but maybe next time. <laughs> you know, that was it. Um, but it was good to have communication and have a, uh, someone there, man, that was going through the same struggle. Now, from there, you get moved to a main line. And that's a whole different story, my first day on a main line. Because it's a totally different animal from a reception. A reception is just a whole lot of people. You're getting tests ran. You're sitting there. You're waiting to get moved. Um, wasn't really nothing going on. Like I said, we were on lockdown. That's what my first day in prison was. My first day in prison was boredom. It was apprehension. It was a little tension. Because, man, you know, the homeboy let me know if these doors crack and we're able to get out the whites, get off, you know, because they'll get off on you. And I remember thinking, man, I seen this big old white dude going to shower and I was like, damn, homie. Shit, I was looking at my arms like, man, I'm working with 15. I keep them clean, though. But, damn, that was like on some 26s. I thought I see him rolling. They hate it. I was like, good Lord. Doesn't matter about size. Doesn't matter about none of that, man. If you're there to defend your casa and your people, you're going to fucking do that. And that's just what it is. So, anyways, my first day in prison, to be totally honest with you, was a day of nothing. Um, a day of getting to know and reflecting back, back on what I had fucking sacrificed to get where I was. In a way, I was happy because I finally achieved something since I was a kid I wanted to achieve. But in a way, I was, it was, it was like a mystery to me, you know? And the, and, and the beat goes on. All I could say is, you know, I'm going to get to a story maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day, about my first day hitting the main line. That was a different story, a different animal. Um, and I fell right into fucking the melee. So we're going to get to that. But with that being said, that's my first day in prison. True story, actual, factual, Tracy, DVI. Rolled up there, man, was like, what the hell's going on here? Um, the water was brown, uh, the people stunk, and it was just a reception. With that being said, hope that you move smooth with a purpose, get everything that you want coming to you. I appreciate you guys tuning in to hear my stories. You don't have to, but you do. Gracias. It's appreciated. It's highly, highly, highly appreciated. That's just what it is, man. Thumbs up or thumbs down. See, Heavy's going to be the head that wears my crown. I'm going to continue to tell my stories and keep it as real with you as I can, and that's just what it is. For those that don't like me, that's fine, homes. You ain't got to watch it, man. Go find Bigfoot. For those that do and participate in asking questions and leaving fucking comments, thank you. It's highly appreciated. Let's get this algorithm rigged. You know what I mean? You know what it is. This is the gun. Bang, bang. And in that fashion, that's it. Gracias.